subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel worth it well you can pick this guy up now on the used market for under $300 and I feel like it's a good choice to do that because you know these phones are not that old and they're not going to be in that bad of condition if you do this and it's a lot less so you know under 300 mid to 300s as well this is just a steal here right now of a phone and the value has plummeted well because LG phones are not that popular still in the eyes of mainstream consumers. So in this video, I wanted to explain why this is such a, a great deal for you guys to pick up right now if you're looking for a yesteryear flagship and you want really good specifications. So on that topic of specifications, let's quickly refresh you here. I mean, come on, man. You get six inch display here, 1440 by 2880 pixel display for under $300 and under, you know, 400 in most cases. This is just bonkers. 16 megapixel dual camera on the rear glass design with a stainless steel feeling side here. It feels just like the iPhone 10, basically just a little bit thinner on the sides. That's just fantastic. Also, you're going to get four gigabytes of RAM, which is plenty enough for most smartphones and Snapdragon 835 CPU, which is definitely the older one versus the 845 but you would hardly tell a difference unless you're really, really looking for it between an 835 phone and an 845 phone. It's not the massive leaps and bounds and jump in a processor. And also you get a 3300 milliamp hour battery. Don't be afraid of the size. We're gonna talk about why that's not really an issue with the LG V30. Okay, so discussing the hardware and design, the LG V30 actually has a very thin bezels on both sides, super thin bezels. Uh, there is a little bit of a chin here and a little bit of a bezel up at the top so it's not your fully all screen design but it's still a very nice one albeit now this phone is only actually 7.3 millimeters thin on the sides and also weighs at 158 grams so the weight of this phone is extremely light in comparison to most flagships that were launched last year and what this equals is a pretty nicely balanced phone so in the hand it's very comfortable considering its massive screen size which is kind of nuts considering that this phone almost feels the height of like a pixel 2 xl but it's much lighter than most you know bigger phones like an iphone 8 plus for example now this thing has ip68 dust and waterproof up to 1.5 meters so this is pretty great mil std 810g compliant so military grade spec here to withstand those environments so even though this phone looks fragile it's actually not that fragile and i'm sure the glass can crack if you drop it on the the floor or something like that so you definitely still want a case for the v30 but it's a pretty durable hardware overall and and for me it's been pretty great when it comes to feeling just super light and super thin so so not a lot of phones actually feel this light for this size so if you're the type of person who don't like heavy phones you would really appreciate the LG V30. I want to move on to displays. It's still worth it to buy this in terms of display. So you do have a P OLED display here. It supports up to 16 million colors as most OLED displays do. Six inches and this covers 81.2% screen to body ratio. So it's not the biggest screen to body ratio. It has a total of 537 pixels per inch on the screen density, which basically just means that this screen is sharper actually than the Galaxy Note 9's display that just dropped in terms of its sharpness. Now, this OLED is definitely not up to the best OLEDs on the market, but it's still very good, still has really nice colors, and I think nobody's gonna be really too disappointed with it. Now, it does have a little bit of a blue shift, but how many people are really gonna be taking their phone and looking at it on a super angle like that? So for example, if you're on a white screen, if you do shift it like so, you definitely see a blue shift, but this is common amongst other OLEDs as well. It's not quite as significant on like a Samsung device, which has more of a red shift when you shift it. But unless you're not, I mean, who's really going to be reading like this or looking like this? It's really not such a big deal. It just looks kind of bad on camera versus in real life. You don't really even notice this. So overall, I would say the display for the money is actually a really good one and better than LCD for sure, but doesn't get quite as bright as like the LG G7 ThinQ. Is it still worth it in terms of software? Well, I just picked this one up, so it's still running the NuGet version. I haven't updated to the 8.0, and this is gonna be a tricky one. This is one of the only areas that I don't really like too much about the V30, but it's not like it's crippling the phone or anything. It's just that I don't think it's the most refined, clean looking software on the market, and updates haven't came super quickly 
But that's the price you pay sometimes when you buy, you know, an LG phone is that you don't get the software updates super fast in comparison to like a Google Pixel, for example. But it definitely has all the neat features you would need, like the shortcut keys. And you also have, you know, theming options. You can change out your smart settings here. It does have plenty of features that easily compete. And you also have their signature feature, the floating bar, which allows you to, you know, make like little gifts and you could cut out little screen portions if you want. So this kind of goes directly against uh, Samsung's S Pen, but you kind of do it with your finger. This is also, you can move this around wherever you want on the screen if it starts getting in your way, the floating bar. So that's a pretty neat feature here. And I would say you have pretty nice design icons here in the settings menu. The Google Pixel on Android 9 actually looks kind of similar to this with the color. And going in display, you have plenty of display settings. So this phone has knock on as well. There's just a lot going on for the settings menu in terms of features. You have quite a few here. You just don't get updates super fast on this device and the software does give you the option to have a app drawer or you can have no app drawer if you like that more you know grid of icon style no app drawer you have wallpaper motion effects so it's loaded with features you're, you're going to be finding features for quite some time on an lg v30 it will take a while to learn everything this phone does have to offer but at the same time it doesn't feel too complex either discussing the phone's performance is it still worth it and yes definitely in terms of performance this phone does not lag pretty much no matter what you throw at it. It's really hard to choke up pretty much any Snapdragon 835 phone. And the LG V30 is no exception. I would say that its software is actually a little less twitchy than some of the Samsung devices that you can purchase. So pretty smooth software overall. And buying this right now, you're going to have no lag on an LG V30. So this is one of the best benefits of buying a, a phone that's only about a year old. Uh, you still get a very up-to-date modern feeling processor and it's definitely not slow so very fast and very impressed with the performance for the lg v30 now one thing i do want to mention is that it has four gigs of ram so sometimes you're going to have a little bit of a lag when it comes to you know opening like 25 apps at once some might reload for sure on this phone but just day-to-day -day operations things run very smooth for the LG V30, even here in late 2018. So moving on to battery life, is it still worth it in terms of battery life? Well, with the LG V30, yes, I think it is. I've been using it for a couple weeks now, and this phone has just been very impressive in terms of battery life. It gets me through a full day rather easily, even though it has a 3300 milliamp hour battery. And I think you can go 1.5 days on the LG V30. It's actually quite shocking considering it has the same size battery as my Note 8 but it lasts longer than that phone. So I'm getting about six hours on screen time with this one and uh, it definitely goes a full day. So battery life, yes, definitely still worth it for the LG V30. So discussing one of the most important factors of the LG V30 is the audio. So I don't have a headset connected, but you can see right there, Hi-Fi quad DAC. The headphone jack placement, I don't really like too much because it's at the, up at the top. That always makes for a little bit of an awkward experience. I do like headphone jacks at the bottom, but you do have a hi-fi quad deck, but only a mono speaker. However, that hi-fi quad deck does require some pretty pricey headphones. So you're going to need ones that are, you know, definitely support, you know, hi-fi quality, you know, audio. So you're going to pay maybe 200 for headphones like that uh, to start. So definitely you need those. But when you do use them, it sounds amazing on this phone. And you can tweak the way the audio sounds as well once you have the headset connected. Like I say, I don't really like the placement of the headphone jack, but the sound that comes out of here is pretty much unbeatable and then i don't like the speaker at the bottom it's not that loud so i think if you value audio through a headphone jack the v30 is still fantastic but if you value external audio this one might not be for you so let's discuss maybe the most important aspect as to why the LG V30 is still a steal at under $300, and that's those cameras. You get dual you know, cameras here, 16 megapixels on the first one and 13 megapixels on the second one. F1.6 for the main lens and F1.9 for the second lens. This does have LED flash, HDR, 2160p at 30 FPS or 4K video recording. That is the same thing. And it really records great sound when you're shooting video. So it might be the best phone for content creators to, you know, just make videos and stuff. You can get a lot of work done with this phone because it has the audio you need. You wouldn't even need a mic to make a pretty decent video with this phone. If you go into modes, it's just loaded 
with features, manual, manual video, snapshot, match shot, cine video, which is pretty cool for, you know, people who are in the film and stuff like that. You can do a point zoom on things, which makes for a pretty dramatic effect. If we go to mode, you do have grid shot. You do have guide shot, food, slow-mo, time-lapse, snap movie, panorama, 360 panorama, pop-out. And then if we go into settings, you can change your photo size, video resolutions, you know, timers, tracking focus, steady recording. I mean, it is all there here for the LG V30. But being as it is all there, that to me makes it a little bit confusing sometimes for just a mainstream customer. So if you're into, you know, just taking a photo, snapping it and don't want to deal with with settings, this one's not going to be for you. That would be better for a Pixel. But that wide-angle lens comes in very handy a lot of times. And I'm going to show you some photo samples I took with this phone in just a minute. But just look how wide that camera goes. It's just ridiculous here for the LG V30. And photos overall fire very quickly. And they come out pretty good if you're in good daylight. I don't think the LG V30 does have the absolute best camera anymore on a smartphone. It never was rated the best but I think that it has great manual control. And if you know how to use this phone, you actually can produce better photos than most other smartphones. So this is really the phone that you need to take some time and learn how to use the manual modes, and then you can produce the best photos possible. But here is just some photos that I took with the phone. You could judge the camera quality based on a couple of these photos right here. <laughs> Quickly discussing my calling experience. It's been very good. No drop calls. Very clear, crisp HD voice on here. And the uh, speakerphone was okay. But being as it's a mono speaker, it wasn't too loud. So I still prefer talking just straight through the earpiece. But overall, no drop calls. So I'm actually quite impressed with this LG when it comes to call quality. I haven't had anybody saying they couldn't hear me. So thumbs up in this regard if you care a lot about you know making phone calls with your phone. So quickly wrapping it up, I did mention the things that are not so great about this device are scattered and slow software updates, the mono speaker, and the cameras are not the best on any smartphone, but they're still pretty great. And this is just really nitpicking here on the LG V30 because if you buy this phone right now at under $300, you basically got a $900 phone because when this phone first came out, it was like $900 for, you know, a quarter of that price or at least one third of that price. So this is a fantastic steal on the used market. And I really think that you'll be happy at least for a year or two with this phone, you know, at the money you're going to pay for it. So fantastic option here. Uh, if you're looking for a yes to your flagship, do you have an LG V30? Are you planning on buying one or is there a phone that you were thinking about getting in comparison to this phone? Let us know down below in the comment section of this video. People will answer your questions. I'll try to answer your questions as much as possible. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my upcoming updates and videos. We got the iPhone 10, 10 Plus, Note 9, all that stuff is 